One of the things we've learned while making this series is that people who live in extreme homes are sometimes pretty extreme themselves. My name is Doc Ramblin' Tommy Scott. In my occupation, I'm a snake oil pitching salesman. The only one, I believe, they tell me that's left on the entire, in the entire world that's actually for real. Ladies and gentlemen, for its 108th year of continuous running, the last real old-time medicine show, please make welcome our star, Doc Tommy Scott. I'm 82 years old and still going strong. Never had another job in my life except for the medicine show. Old Doc Chamberlain came to the Coa, Georgia, my hometown here, and I swung a guitar over my back and went up and asked him for a job, and he hired me $6 a week and let me sleep in the wagon, and I've been doing it all these years. Snake oil is herbs, roots, barks, and berries mixed together, and it's an external rub on liniment. You can put a few drops of snake oil in the pan of your hand, and in about two or three minutes, it'll come completely through on the other side, carry the other ingredients right through with it. It's the only place you can buy a bottle of snake oil is on old Doc Scott's medicine shop. Old Doc can make some medicine. There's no snake in snake oil, never has been or never will be. That's just to catch your attention and then you, 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 go, you go ahead and pitch the, what, the, what the good that the stuff will do for external rub on liniment type thing. That's what it's about. And if it don't work, I give them their money back and that's a better deal than the undertaker will give. <laughs> and of course, to sell the snake oil, you need an entire show to do it. My wife, I, I married Miss Frankie and she became my magician. And then along came a little old girl called Baby Sandra, we called her Sandra Vet, and if she was my girl singer, and she played the bass, she did a high act and so on. And though he's never stopped taking his show on the road, some 40 years ago, he and Frankie decided to build a house. Naturally, it wasn't going to be an ordinary one. Doc Tommy Scott says they were inspired by the very roots of his profession. The herbal medicine thing dates back to about 2700 B.C. in China. And I always laughingly say that if you're going to be undertaker, take a look like one, you know. And that's the reason the house is oriented. Kind of fits in with what I'm doing with the patent medicine thing. Chinese statuary and pagoda-like embellishments are everywhere from the entrance gate to the rooftop. The house is a sprawling one story made of custom brick embedded with marble chips. A huge pool, not in use at this time of the year, is the focal point. Across from it is an open room that in summertime is great for entertaining. And they do get a lot of visitors, sometimes rather confused ones. Every once in a while we'll have some salesman come by and he'll think that we're some kind of an oriental cafe or something. We say, no. <laughs> We're not that. We're, we're, I, maybe when I pass on, somebody might make a cafe out of this place. I don't know. Frankie and I designed it. We'd play a show and sit backstage waiting for the next show to come along. We'd draw a little of this, and she'd say, I don't like that, and put this in. And finally, of course, I, uh, most of the stuff that she wanted in it, you know. So I give her credit, too. I guess it's the only one in the whole world like it, you know. Can't argue with that, can we? When we come back, we'll see the inside, where Doc, Tommy Scott, and Frankie really went overboard with the Oriental theme. Welcome back to Extreme Homes. We're in Toccoa, Georgia, about to go inside medicine man Doc Tommy Scott's Oriental Palace. For rural Georgia, this house is mighty unusual, but it's oddly apt for this old showman. When you walk in the, the very front door out there, you think you're walking into a jungle. It's what we call the flower room. And we have some herbs in the summertime zone since I'm a medicine man. And I did do the painting on the wall there. I'm an amateur artist. Uh, I've never tried to sell any of my material or anything, but if you had a show finish, you got to sign a new poster, you know, a little bit of that stuff don't hurt. There's pieces in this living room that's come from everywhere, nearly. But the overall effect is totally oriental. Everywhere you look,
dog is another figurine or statue. Carved chairs and tables. A huge screen and a magnificent decorated break front. Some items were gifts from patrons, like the red silk chair. Doc Tommy himself painted the almost three-dimensional scene on the base of the dining room table. And just like there's no snake in the oil he sells, those dining room chairs are regal, but they're not real gold. Funny thing, though most of the furnishings do come from China, Tommy's never been there himself. I don't like to fly. Uh, I don't go nowhere, I can't get out of my motorhome. Like the living room, the bedroom is a complete Asian experience. It's quite a sizable bedroom there, all oriental, of course, in there. Most of the stuff I designed, the television, of course, the decor of it is, is, is oriental. I made the uh, headboard of the bed there. And then you'll notice on around then to the clothes closets there, that's folding thing, and I painted the oriental scene that you can look off into the space and see. Now, we only have one bedroom. Did you notice that? Just one bedroom. Well, the reason for that is when these old show people get broke, well, they'll have move in this day with us two or three months, you know what I mean? So when they come in to visit, I welcome them in real good, but then they ain't over from sleep and they'll, they won't hang in there too long. The bathroom is also rather exotic. That's Frankie's idea. Throughout the years, and being a show lady, why, she designed that bathroom in there pretty well the way she wanted it. He's a good husband. You don't look right with that hat on. There's nothing particularly oriental about the kitchen, which is almost as colorful as Tommy's outfit, and a comfortable spot for a crowd. Tommy's office picks up on the Asian theme, making it a conducive place to answer the thousands of fan mail letters he still gets. But there's one room in the house that strikes an entirely different chord. We call this the bunkhouse. It's filled with memorabilia of life as a snake oil pitchman. And it's a museum, too. Well, to this is headquarters for the International Medicine Show Hall of Fame. Tommy's definitely a charter member and the only living inductee. Here in this room, you can trace all aspects of his long career. Besides the traveling show, he's made movies and hundreds of records. Been on TV, too. I've been on Johnny Carson, Oprah Winfrey, uh, on and on and on. I've been just about all the big ones I have been on. All in all, it's a house that's uniquely suited to a truly one-of-a-kind, last-of-a-dying-breed individual. I learned this from old Doc Chamberlain, who gave me the formula to the snake oil and, and the herbal uh, tonic laxity. Uh, he said, you got to have something different. And he says, if whenever you build your house, if you ever get a little enough money to build your house, make it different. Instead of having just the same kind of a box that everybody else has, and that, that makes people remember you. And he built it without a thought of ever selling it. Resale never come into it. And right now, as long as there's a bottle of snake oil to sell and I ain't broke, I ain't going to sell no part of the house. Well, clearly, Doc Tommy Scott is still going strong. 